everyone. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. It is episode three. 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 three? three? Yeah. yeah. Of Amplifying uh, Black Voices. Um, welcome back to the podcast. And today we have a very special guest yes. with us. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ntobego Nube, or you can call me Becco if you'd like. Um, I'm a Northumbria uni student doing biomedicine. Um, here to answer your questions. With an amazing voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get into it. First of all, we're going to ask, what is your ethnicity? So my ethnicity is full Zimbabwean. I moved here when I was four years old. But um, because I moved here when I was four, I pretty much consider myself like half British, half some Zimbabwean, really, because more British culture, but Zimbabwean like roots. Right, okay. Yeah. Do you have a British passport? Yeah, British passport, Oh, yeah. right, okay. Right, makes sense. Have you ever, like, go back to Zimbabwe? Um, I went back to Zimbabwe, but the last time I went back, I actually got deported, so it wasn't, it wasn't great. What? It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't on the case that, like, you would think. It's just, like, obviously, um, what, what, what we were doing is we finished, like, a family holiday, basically, and we were going back to, we were coming back to England, but we had to take the bus past to South Africa, and you have to cross the border. Right. And when they see a British passport, they're looking and they're thinking, like, money. So the guy at the like border was like kind of trying to get a bribe out of us. And we had like, it was me, my dad, my little sister, who was like a baby at the time. And we just did not want to bribe them. So they were like, they ended up taking us to like this holding cell. And then we ended up in like a, a, like a van with like bars. And we had to like drive back. Bear in mind, it took us like five hours to drive like to the border. Uh-huh. So we had to drive back in the back of this van with like a baby and everything. And then we got like a plane the next day. Cause there was nothing wrong, but right. it was just, they needed a bribe. That's insane. Whoa. With a baby. Pretty much, yeah. Oh it's my, I was up. not God. expecting that. <laughs> Honestly, like you, I hear, I've heard about this before, like on social media. Yeah. But Jesus Christ. CC, I love Zimbabwe, but it's just so corrupt. It's mm. a shame. It's a yeah. shame. Yeah completely understand that i've <laughs> definitely i've never been through such a situation like that but yeah. back in africa i've witnessed a situation like family right. is relative so yeah unfortunately that's one of the realities back home so but what would you say your experience has been like being a person of color in britain mm, so newcastle is like a weird one because like Newcastle is actually quite multicultural, even like so some people wouldn't think. And I and you do manage to find like a lot of people that you would relate to and pe- people tend to be really friendly. Like the north, I don't know, like people seem to be like really nice. Definitely. Um I kind of find that I have a kind of, a kind of personality that I'm not really gonna try and be like aggressive towards anyone and usually people like see that and they try and just like they're usually on my side. So I haven't honestly I haven't experienced a lot of like racism or segregation or if i have it was maybe like subtle yeah like subtle like undertones right. things like mm. that like like my mom would always tell me like as a black person you need to work like two times as hard to mm. get out of the, 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 those like barriers and things like that yeah and i just do and just take it on the chin because even if it is something that, that that's been like racist or anything like that you just go by and just see, see, see what else you got really so did you not really like have any problems with like racism like throughout school or anything like that So I used to get bullied a little bit, but that was more because I used to have like quite a bad stir because obviously I was learning English. So I think it was like the anxiety of actually talking and things like Mm -hmm. that just just caused me to have a stir. So I used to get bullied a little bit, but then once I got like my confidence over my English started getting better um, and I could kind of just stand up for for, for myself, it kind of just stopped. And the group of friends that I grew up with um, were mostly white, white friends anyways. And I don't think they would like stand for any racism on my part like mm-hmm. i was quite lucky with that and like even my, my friends now like a lot of them are like immigrants like one of my best friends bruno um he came to country when he was like 14 and we met and he's from portugal and he didn't speak any english and then i took the role that my friends had right. on me and it was like to, to kind of gave back yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah, give back, back to the community, community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so have you lived in the south of england at any point no no thankfully right. thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully really <laughs> The South just seems more aggressive. I feel like as as a black person in those areas, like because of your surroundings and the way they put you in like maybe these poorer areas, you have less of an opportunity to like not go down those paths. So I'm, I actually feel very blessed that my mum didn't end up having to go to like London and be in like these like situations, things like that. You end up in Newcastle because yeah. Newcastle's not that bad, really. No, it's not. No, bad I wouldn't say so. Yeah, it's, it's quite. Yeah, it's quite mild. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that as a positive or a negative, depending yeah. what you're into. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. That makes 
friends. So what do you study at Northumbria? So I study biomedical science along with Joanna over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very nice. <laughs> Very smart people. We've got some smart here. people, honestly. You can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because um, I did want to become a doctor because obviously the African, like... That was going to be my question. I was, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. When you grow up, you're going to become a doctor. My mom will say that. Um, but I'm just not smart enough. <laughs> to be honest with you. What are you doing that? Nah, because biomed may as well stand for BTEC medicine. Like it's <laughs> people that don't get into medicine they will to default work. to biomed. Are you serious? That's a lot I of the course. It's a lot of the course. Right. Because like, I think to be in medicine, you have to have like a certain like love for learning or you have mm. to like learn in a certain way that's so rigid. Like the, the people that are geniuses in school, like, the, you know what I mean? Like those are the ones that are going to be doctors. Mm. But if you're more of a... I see myself as a bit more creative mm. and maybe I learn in my own way. And social right. as well. Mm. Social as well, yeah, because if you study in medicine, you won't have social life. And it's also, right. Yeah, it's a hard load to take. It's facts. It's a lot of commitment to take. Cause yeah, it's like, commitment as well. You've just got to sacrifice so a much lot, for like yeah. five, six years and then you're on like the big books. And I was like, mm. I do want to live life during my 20s because like it's my yeah, 20s. Like, I'm trying to have fun. Not yeah. really because a lot of junior doctors actually keep complaining about because you don't even get that. Yeah, the pay here uh, yeah, is the not pay, that good. Yeah, the Every status is not, it's not relevant anymore. So, so what do you want to do now? Oh. Like what are your plans, your dreams? I want to see you doing like a fashion show at some Honestly. point. I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, I just want to do some stuff that I'll be proud of. I don't necessarily have plans for like career or things like mm-hmm. that. I think now I'm just in a place where I want to create something that I can look back on and be like, yo, you did that. Like, mm. that's cool. Like, you know what I mean? Um, working on my own brand. So I've got this brand called Baller as Fuck. I don't know yeah. if I can swear on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can swear on this show. We've got a drop come come and see and I'm going to drop like a nice little lookbook. Um, I will be asking you to, to model in that actually. Of course, fair, of sure. course. We'll add the tags as well. Of course. All the course. tags, Instagram, course, anything, course, website, course, course. handle. At Young Becco for <laughs> the normal Instagram. Follow at, guys. At Bible of Becco for the Fitpick Instagram. At BAF4L for the Garms. There okay, so you guys have three accounts to follow. There you go. <laughs> Let's yeah. make sure we're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Get those follows in. <laughs> of course, yeah. So, in regards to the fashion, how did you get into that? And do you feel like it's easy in Newcastle? Because for me, I've always felt like Newcastle is not the place to be to be creative. <laughs> not really, but I feel like the community is getting bigger okay, now. Okay, it's fair, it's getting bigger, but it's so, it's so concentrated. That's like, true. everyone is literally, you know exactly who is in that group. If you know one person, then you pretty much know everyone. But that's also right. good because, like, as long as you can make friends with one person, then it allows you to, like, go do all those things, true. like... Like Aluchi, for example, mm. who, who who we both know, who's like a stylist. Like yeah. she's managed to go do all these things just because she's so friendly. Mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's 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 nice. But fashion in terms of Newcastle, there's nothing really going on except for like mm-hmm. our group. But it's kind of nice because that means it's like a blank slate, and then you can make it whatever you want because right. there's no expectations. So what it is. Whereas in London, it's like, oh, your brand isn't avant garde enough. Oh, like, right, yeah, you know okay. what I mean? Like you don't fashion have, is you yeah. know what I mean? I don't know. And in which way, if you agree to that, uh, like black, um, like African culture inspired in your mm. in your fashion, like. So I have opinion that black culture is culture. Like black culture really sets up like everything in yeah, terms yeah. of modern that's culture. Very interesting. Yeah, it that's really a, does. That's a good statement. Because if you think in terms of music, like we're it's setting so, music yeah. and music it started actually with uh, yeah with soul back in the days. And then and then like even speaking of soul, like the clothes that the soul artists would wear, people would be like, oh my god, like that's it, like that, that's the mood. Yeah. And the same way like rappers do do now, like these like ASAP Rockies and these like Tyler the Creator things like this, like. Yeah. Black people are in a position now where they can just like express themselves so well just because of how free the world is. And it's kind of beautiful because you just take all this like inspiration from all these people. And you're like, oh my God, like this is sick. Yeah. Like, I don't know who do you, who like inspires you guys? Like what's. In terms of like fashion. Yeah, in terms of fashion. like In terms of fashion for me, obviously. No Laurie Campbell. Harvey. Mm, no, <laughs> Campbell. Sure, yeah. no, me Campbell for me very much. So, Super um, Laurie. Super. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, like there's just a certain class and standard that she has that she just never you know she doesn't she, go for yeah, anything she simple she's not it's never like oh yeah i'm black and a model she's yeah. just a model yeah, yeah, she's yeah. her yeah so i think definitely her for me and there's like smaller like designers like um 
Oh my days, I forgot his name. He recently passed away, RIP. But he was, yeah. um, he worked for, um, or he was friends with Anna Wintour from Vogue. Cool. Yeah, and he was he was a black man, and I just loved him. Off white? No, 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 oh. no. Virgil. He's like he was R. older. Virgil, yeah, yeah he, he was a lot older. I literally forgot his name. I can't remember. But he was definitely someone that I would really like look up to because yeah. he's just very elegant. Like, it's just very like yeah. a lot of elegance, and I think that's really respectful. But for me, what I find very different is I think American black culture mm. and British black culture to me are two it's different things different. yeah, yeah completely. and that's so when right. people are talking about culture yeah. like for me I was saying on the last podcast I was raised very much with American black culture yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That same was as only, me. that's yeah. only what I was raised on yeah. I was not introduced to British black culture until I came here and I wouldn't say like I'm not into the grime I'm not yeah, into yeah, yeah, none yeah. of that but it's and actually rising now at the moment yeah, yeah and it's, it's really becoming the fashion yeah nowadays. but I feel like it's yeah. very like Different, you know. So, would you say you're more influenced like by? I I like it. I quite like it. I quite like, like it. It's not necessarily my taste. So, so in terms of fashion, mm-hmm. UK doesn't inspire me like at mm. all. Really, I love London fashion. I no. mean, I love the garage type of fashion. I love it. I, it's so edgy. Rave culture, yes, actually. Yeah, I think rave culture, yes. England is punkier. Is yeah, yeah like, I that, like that. I like not my style. But like, what really? I'm talking no. about is like people that have like an entire rainbow of night tech fleeces that actually sounds so boring to me. Like, yeah. No. I get its comfort. Like, I get that. Like, I saw Central C pulled up to his boy's wedding in a tracksuit, and I'm like, that's disrespectful. No, 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 no,
next week, people. Cool. I've got oh, a book okay, for next I'll, week. I'll get to meet Both her. Both called, um, she's got, ve- it's very different. It's very her. And I really like that about her, you know? I, think, I like when people dress in a unique way. Yeah, like, you know oh, what I'm saying? That's like, just, you. That's yeah, your like, style. Just, like, you know, that's you your identity. Tell, like, when you look at them, you're like, yeah, that is that's Beko yeah, yeah, for yeah. me. Like, yeah. you look at him and that's his yeah, style. Like, the rings, like, that's Beko's style. Literally, for you, I was like, the rings, the silver in the hair, the style. I was like, I like that. Like, it's, yeah. it's a look, you know? Yeah. And it's those subtle things. I have this thing. Um, every single time I go to the library, I take a library fit pic, and people always like people are always like, "What do you only go to the library to take fit pics?" Like I'm, I'm, I'm going in the li- li- library looking like boring and stuff, and I'm like, "You step out every single day, like thinking you look mid. Like mm. why would you do that?" Facts. I think like feeling looking good is a large part of feeling good yeah, like if, I fully agree. if i'm 100%. stepping in a crazy outfit like i'm walking through that li- library like everyone's got a crush on me and my work's just getting done so honestly i sit down like damn he really sat down and i'm like yeah i'm just gonna, <laughs> he really I'm, just gonna, I'm, just gonna I'm gonna talk to you right now I'm no just gonna, i fully <laughs> agree like that's the truth i love that so i think when you need to go out you need to go out put together like obviously you need to be like to the tens but i think there's something there's a certain swag that comes yeah. with that that you can't get from anything else yeah. and I, I like i think i love that like in your head having your hair done yeah. you know new shoes or like for girls nails done hair done face beat and that outfit that makes you feeling different you want to go like travel the world yeah i'm on day travel the world you, go, everyone, you want everyone to see you honestly and i think that's that's why I, like i want to see that a little bit more but that's why i feel like newcastle fashion culture is so condensed that like, you can tell who's kind of like in there you know mm-hmm. and i would love to see it to be more like i feel like in london you'll see everyone everything. walk out with yeah. everything mm. and it's insane sometimes you'll be like oh they're really wearing that but it's like <laughs> it's great you know like it's i love to see it or like guys in skirts guys and things like i yeah. honestly i think that is so cool like when it's done right i think it can look so classy and so like you know yeah. different and i love that and i want to see that more in newcastle i think i need to take you on Question. a trip to edinburgh mm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. She would love it anyway. Are you attracted to guys in skirts? Um, because you say that, but do you, are you just are you just into the aesthetic of it, or are you actually attracted to guys in skirts? I wouldn't say I'm attracted to guys in skirts specifically, but I've got a man's right now, so I wouldn't say I'm really like I'm not looking mm, for things. But there's okay. like I have when I see like certain fit, and I'm just like in love. Straight away, just like just out, just for that fit, like I just love that fit. I'm just in love, yeah. like that's it, and that's like I just I love seeing that. Or even when it's like, it might not be my style. Like Vivian Westwood clothes aren't really my style. Yeah, but I love it. Mm-hmm. Like I absolutely love it because it's just so. You see the art. Yeah, yeah behind, you know yeah. what I'm saying. And like I love when like see outfits like this thought put yeah. into that. Like, even it could be like all black or really like yeah. you know mm-hmm. just simple, but there's thought put into that, and I love it. I, Mm-hmm. Talent. I think that's amazing, and I want to see that in Newcastle. Do you think? Uh, do you guys think that um, fashion is like a love language for you? Like, if a girl or a boy like actually knows how to pull up a nice outfit, it's like a love language. Yes. Yeah. Oh sure. You yeah. don't even have to be attractive, but you just have yeah. to show me that like you care about the way you present yourself. And I like, I'll be looking at you like, God damn, that's a fit. And then like, it doesn't even matter what you be saying. I'm just like, that is a fit mm-hmm. in my head, and I'm just wow. Like, I'm just amazed. <laughs> to be honest, it happens all the time. Yeah. Clothes can put me off from someone very quickly. Facts. Yeah, Facts. it would just be, I'd just be like, mm. Facts. You know? yeah. And it's not be, yeah, like, I don't think it has to be insane, but, like, it's just, like, being put together nicely. Like, obviously, even though baggy pants aren't necessarily my style, like, I can still see baggy pants to be, like, the beauty, a look. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I can still see, like, a look. Like, you have, don't have to love it. My except, like, works, you know? Just because yeah. it won't work on me or I wouldn't know how to style it doesn't mean it isn't a look. And I think that's what, you know, attracts me to people. Especially yeah. like friends and stuff. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. I like that. I could be your friend. Like, <laughs> could be, could be, I need some style tips, you know? All of my friends, this is a fact, all of my friends step incredibly different. Like, mm. they they are very well dressed. And I don't hang around with anyone that dresses badly. Not as a, I will <laughs> not, I, w- I won't, like, talk to you if you dress badly, because I will. Mm-hmm. But you just might not be my friend. Oh, <laughs> I want everyone to go search up Echo's friends and tell me if this is a fact or not. That's what I want, I want everyone to make sure that they're doing. Um, so you guys think, like, so for you, like, fashion is a way that um, African culture, just in fashion, like, do you get influenced in any other, like, branch, like, music or... So you're saying in African culture, do I get influenced? Um, I listen to, I don't listen to a lot of African music because I don't speak my home language. Mm-hmm. But um, 
at a barbecue, I'll be grooving. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the aunties will put some bangers on, like some yeah. old. Like if if you're Zimbabwe, you might know like one guru by like my magic. If that comes on in a barbecue, you know like all the aunties are on the up. floor. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's going <laughs> crazy. Like I still feel my African roots in that sense, and I yeah. always like try and be as involved as possible. But like it's kind of hard for me not being able to speak the language, which is like a goal of mine. Like I will learn my language at some point. But yeah. with all this like uni stuff, I just mm. need to focus on this and yeah. get like my brain sorted, and then mm. give myself time and like get my roots because it. As a black person, not knowing my own language is a bit is a bit of like a makes you feel out of place. You know? A little yeah, bit. Yeah. It's hard to like relate to my roots fully yeah. if it's mm-hmm. like like I can't even speak to my grandma really. Right. Like I'm having yeah. like I'm having conversations with her, but like they're forced because it's like mm-hmm. she doesn't speak English that well. So it's like really limited. Yeah. And it, and and that really lies on me to like sort that out because it's clearly like my issue there. To be yeah. fair, but. That's one of the things that we I was talking about the last episode, the fact that I don't feel that connected yeah. to my roots uh, from Angola. So yeah, I completely resonate with what you're saying. Wow. Do you feel like, is there a large com- a community, like Zimbabwean community in Newcastle? You're actually the first person that was there is a huge Zimbabwean community in Newcastle. Really? I recently found out that the government do this thing where like when you move from a certain country, they're like put you in areas like on purpose for like diversity things and like are you serious yeah like they are like on the series so like my mum when she came to this country was given a choice between london newcastle like i think milton keys but it was only like it was only like four places so it was like she had to move to one of those Mm -hmm. and as a consequence of that like when my family and things move over here they were like oh like what's Newcastle saying mm-hmm. and because they only had like very few options like you can't just move wherever you want to move for some reason like I, I, I thought I was a weird person right? so they moved a lot of Zimbabwean people there during like that like period that I came so loads of my family's here and I've met like loads and loads of some Zimbabwean people like I know like a hundred Zimbabwean people around here like wow. it's crazy that is so impressive. This may as well be Zimbabwe to be fair. <laughs> that is really good so do you feel like that's kind of helped you stay in touch with your roots, your culture. The Zimbabwean people I know aren't really that, See, like... Right, yeah. connected with the roots. You know well. what I mean? Because yeah. they also did the same thing I did, and they're yeah. more like... I think when you come to this country as an immigrant, you kind of have to be, like, a bit of a chameleon, and you got to, like, take in mm. what the culture is there. And, it, and in doing that, it kind of demonizes your actual culture mm-hmm. because it's, like... At least when I was growing up, like being an immigrant was just like, oh, like it was more misunderstanding because it's like this misconception. It was like, oh, like immigrants are this, immigrants are that. Like, like, are you, are you like aligned with this like stereotype? Is this really you? Is this really you? Do you know what I mean? But um, now that people just see black people and they see immigrants, they see like all these cultures more. I think there's less of a stereotype now, so people can just like be normal and just interact yeah. pretty well. I think that's so interesting because that's yeah. like so different to like my serve when I came here. But obviously I came from Holland. So I came from, you know, a place that people love to say, oh, I've been to Amsterdam, I've been thinking. Yeah. So for me coming here, it was very like, I had none of that kind of like out of place. All of it was like, just Smooth. you're Dutch. You yeah, just speak yeah. Dutch. That was the only difference. Yeah. Yeah. But people just thought that was cool. And I never had that experience of like, oh yeah, you're like, you're an immigrant or thing. Like I felt straight at home. But that might also be because I went to Milton Keynes, and in Milton Keynes, I would say that's a very, like, culturally mixed, like, mm-hmm. group of people. Like, the mm. community there is really, really mixed. That's really interesting. The the only black people in my entire school were me and my cousin there. So it was like... Oh, my God. It's insane. When I first right. moved to Newcastle, it was like that. I went to Willy Bay High School, yeah. right? I had the biggest culture shock of my life. Like, it was literally traumatic to me. I moved. I was sad and depressed. Every yeah. single day, yeah. I was at Weaver High School. No shade to anyone that has gone there. <laughs> anyways, it was like me. There was, I swear, there was like two, like my, me and my sister, and maybe like two other black, black, yeah, well, yeah. mixed, not even black, yeah. mixed kids, yeah. right? And I went, we, I'm telling you, the school that I went to, it was culturally mixed. Like that was, everyone was there, but it was, I think, I would say the black population was maybe a little bit higher where yeah. I went to school in Milton Keynes. And then coming here, like, I literally, like, my brother took me to school the first day, and he looked around, and he was like, 
the fuck? Like, he was like, <laughs> where, is, where is, like, where is mom <laughs> sending you to school? Like, you know? <laughs> and it was really shocking to me because I made sure my mom sent an email. It's very weird, but I made sure my mom sent an email to the school asking, are there black people there? Because <laughs> I wanted to know because yeah. when I came here on holiday, we literally came here once on holiday and then moved. Yeah, yeah. Straight away. And then so it was called, um, I made my mom send like the head teacher an email, are there black people in school? He was like, yes, we're a very multicultural <laughs> school. And I went, there was no one. I was sad. I was depressed. I asked my mom every single day, let me move schools. Let me move schools. Yeah. Because I had a friend, Nicole, that I met in church. And she went to school. And she said, there's loads of black kids here, blah, mm. blah, And I begged my mom. And then there was one day, this guy said the N-word. Damn. Yeah. Right? But he said it like, casually. He was like, you know, like he was just he just said it. Mm. And I was just like, and I already hated the school. So I was ready to fight every single day. Yeah. And I just looked at him. I was like, did you just say that? And I was like, are you good? And like, we started arguing. I got sent out. I don't know why. But I went to the head teacher. And I was like, I'm moving schools. I was like, I promise you, I'm not coming back to the school. Like, I will move schools. This is my last interaction here. <laughs> yeah. And then he called my mom in. And I told my mom what happened. And she was finally like, okay. like, Because everyone was had told my mom basically that the school that I wanted to go to, which was um, Heaton. Well, no, what's it called? Heaton Manor. Yeah, Heaton Manor. Yeah. It's changed the name now. I forgot the new name is. But what's called, everyone's telling you that's a really bad school. You shouldn't be. Yeah, that school there. is not good. I loved it. it. Lived my life. Loved that <laughs> school. That is the school that I'm used to. Bro. I loved it. Bro. I moved. Joanna. I- <laughs> Joanna. As reference, I- <laughs> my, 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 my like, biggest memory of Heat Manor is one time I was opening, like, the paper. You like, went to I was- school there? No, no, no. Oh, I was I went to St. Mary's, which is around the corner. Oh, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice uniform. Mm, blue blazers it. Like, it. Yeah, like, I love that <laughs> um, but I was reading a newspaper I was on the bus and, and I was reading it and Heat Man were on the front page and you know what I was reading <laughs> kid gets his ear bitten off during school fight and I was like what I was like literally like what like what are you talking about like that's too oh much oh my god Casey <laughs> yes, sir, I'm not gonna lie my first day there there was two fights there we go. And I, I loved it. I lived my life. I went home and I was like, that's yeah. that's yeah. you just <laughs> love the thrill. I love it. World I love star. it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know the but I'm living my life. And I moved schools and I just felt so much more comfortable and happier there. And it was just like a complete change. And even though my mom literally, like, we agreed, as long as my grades stayed the same, mm-hmm. stayed high level, she was like, I don't care where you go anymore. So that's why I went there. And I actually really loved it. But everyone had like so much negative things to say about it. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of, you know, it perpetuates the way people act. Like, kids are going to mm. act the way that you're going to say they're going to act. If you say that's the wrong road, go to school mm. and things. I feel like that's part of the reason. How do you feel like the people there were? Like, are they just nice? Or was it was it a misconception? Or were they actually like that? Were they actually on crud? Well, um, <laughs> there were people there that were definitely on that life. That were definitely yeah. troublemakers. Yeah. Though not in a bad way, but a little ghetto. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, that yeah. ghetto's a bad word. You know, I'm a little ghetto, but they were definitely a little ghetto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, there were like a lot of other people that were just normal, just standard. Like I think it was very like there were like two or three groups, maybe four, that were a real ghetto. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then the rest of them were just like just standard. But I feel like if you're constantly gonna say a school's bad, a, a school's bad, a school's this, then I think also like the kids there are gonna act bad. Like you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I feel that's kind of like it's kind of a problem. Yeah. But I love to love to hear my name. By the way, just feeling back a bit like rewinding, mm. when you're saying that like you s- you used to introduce yourself, oh I'm Dutch, whatever mm. and people have people ever like reacted weirdly because you say like you're Dutch but maybe they don't associate you as you being Dutch in the sense of like I yeah. do not claim Holland. But listen. <laughs> so it's a country I was born in, yeah. Holland so I'm Holland. Dutch. No, because like wild. it's a country I was born in, but in Holland like here it's very normal to say you're British. Mm. In Holland, it's not. So in Holland, you automatically say where you're from, like where your oh, parents okay. are from. Even if you were born in Holland, you say automatically where your parents are from because that's what you identify with, right? Like that's yeah. your ethnicity. When I came to England, I'm not going to lie, I made the mistake. I asked him, I was like, where are you from? She was like, England. I was like, you're not. I was like, where are you from? Where are <laughs> yeah, your parents yeah, yeah. from? Because to me, like, it's very normal to say where your parents are Yeah, you know, like, you're like, where right, yeah. literally ethnicity wise. But I found out in England, like, that's not the case. So I always tell people when they ask me, where am I from? I say, born in Holland, but I'm certainly an Indonesian. Like, that, mm. that is... You just that is the full, the full... Yeah, I would just happen to be born there, yeah. but I am certainly yeah. an Indonesian. And I claim that. Like, I don't... Yeah. Holland, I just... I could be born anywhere. That doesn't mean anything, you know? It's just... Funny enough, because yesterday... I just remember this, because yesterday mm. I went, like, to a henna party. That's, like, mm. a pre-wedding uh, yeah, uh, Mindy. thing. Was it Mindy? Mindy, what's that? Oh, that's pre-wedding when they get yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, whatever. 
And I was talking to one of the ladies, so she was like Qatarian. Mm -hmm. Qatar, right? Mm -hmm. And I was talking to her, and she was like, oh, where are you from? And it's like, I'm Portuguese. And she still gave me that look, Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, my mom told her. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like it's it's very like in Holland it's very like you we really don't you don't claim the country that you're born yeah. in. Like you say like oh I was born in but I'm thinking like yeah. I will always be like if I went to Holland and I was to tell someone I'm Dutch, they were like, Shut the F up. Like they would not they would just be like yeah, don't be dumb. Like you're just wasting my time. Yeah. Don't lie to like, me. Yeah, like literally and like I was I think I was in Portugal once and this guy heard us speak Dutch and he looked at me and he went Suriname. Cause he knew where I was from because I'm Surinamese. And like in in Holland, you very much like you kind of know where people are from from the way they look. Yeah. And he just knew, and I was like, we were like, oh, and he was like, yeah, he used to live there. But it's so normal to you don't you don't ever claim Holland, like you just yeah. claim whatever. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's interesting because people kind of take offense to the where are you from from. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I didn't. I never thought saw that as offensive. But I really, really like, yeah. yeah. I found out here that it was a really like it was a bad thing to do. I always think that like I'll never take offense to someone asking a question that's genuine, especially because how would they know unless yeah. they ask you? Yeah. And maybe I'm like one of the only black people they're comfortable enough to be saying that yeah. to you. And I get like, some questions can be a bit like invasive, but mm. at the same time, like conversation is really the only way you're gonna like break past the yeah. barriers. So if you get overly offended, it just stops that person mm -hmm. from asking that question, and they're just gonna have like false opinions, like oh, black people are this, black people are that. Yeah. When you can just have a conversation and then yeah. Yeah. show them how you are. But I feel like like the culture here is very um, polite, mm. and like you know, it like is, in, in Holland, yeah. like where I come from, at least very blunt, very honest. Yeah. You know, like someone asked me, it, obviously I wear wigs. People know I wear wigs. You know, here they'll very much be like, oh, I love your hair. Like, is that your real hair? You know it's not. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's a wig. Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a wig. And I'm proud that it's a wig because I, I put it on real good, you know? But in Holland, they'll just be like, mm, where'd you get your wig from? Like, straight away. And I don't, like, I don't take offense to question of that because yeah. everyone knows it's a wig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like a wig. Yeah. We know I wasn't born with this hair. But here, it's very, it's a, it's very sensitive to talk about things like that. Yeah. But in Holland, it's more like they'll just they'll ask you like straight to your face, like you know, where would you get your hair from? Yeah. Where you think like it's, yeah. it's not like we're not dancing around the subject. So I think that was definitely like a culture shock. It's the same in here. Portugal. Well, they don't say that in such a blunt way. Like, where did you get your wig? No, from? no, it'd not be nice. Like, like, oh, like I love your hair. Like, where did you get it from? Yeah, 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 like yeah, that, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. And but I feel like here it's very, it's very sensitive. You yes, know, it's a very aware culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A question I got asked so many times growing up, like actually such a ridiculous amount of times, is do you have Afro pubes? I got asked that so oh, much. No way. Like an Are you serious? An actual crazy amount. That's like, insane. And that was in like primary school. Like I got asked that so much in primary school. It was ridiculous. That it's, just really shows like the lack of like diversity that there was. Yeah. Exactly. Learn to think, that's insane. Right. That's an insane question to be asked in the first place. Like, right. why, why is that your business in the first place? Like, who cares if I had a braid down yeah. and if I had yeah. straight hair? Yeah, like, yeah. that's not anyone's business. That's crazy. I used to have corners as well, so he's telling me I had corners. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Imagine I braided it down, yeah, yeah. I had the little, had the little bees on everything, <laughs> swinging. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, for us, it was, like, in Holland, it's just, I think in when places that are more culture and more, like, diversity, you tend to experience that problem a lot less. And I think because I grew up yeah. in places where there was, like, it was so culturally, like, diverse, like, I never had those questions, but like when I came to Newcastle, people would ask me, "How did your hair grow so fast?" <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it did not. Like if I go from a bob to a thirty inch, you know, like yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Over the eye flat. <laughs> that's black magic. You know, that's, you know, that's, that's you know, what they're thinking. They're like, but I was just look at them, and I'll be like, "Is this a serious question?" Yeah, I, I asked you this question, yeah. and I'd be like, "It's not mine. Like it's not. I bought this. Like this is not mine." You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, this, like the fact that these are real questions were yeah. like insane to me yeah. because what is the logic? Like, yeah. what, you know, or like, oh, did you dye your hair? I did you get asked at work? Did you dye your hair? Yeah. When I go from blonde to red or like to black or like then I have an afro? I'm like, of course I didn't. Of course I did not. Like, we all know this. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's insane to me. Like, the, just it's funny because I grew up in like in a very small town, and mm. me and my brother, we were the only black people there. Yeah. So mix, not even like Wait. proper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but we never button. we never even we never even got those type of questions. Like people were really? so Yeah, they were it's just okay. They just mind their business. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, okay, you African move on. Mm. You and know what I mean? So I feel like when growing up I never had like duality inside of me, like, mm. oh only when I'm actually around my family in Africa mm. and then like home, 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 I would feel like, Oh, I have two cultures inside me but like mm. community wise in Portugal is still like okay you're African cool that's move really on. good 
in terms of culture, do you think people need to own culture? Because you know how like there's that issue with like cultural appropriation and things oh like my that. God, like, listen, we spoke about this. So like, juicy, we're getting juicy. Honestly, well, like, do people own cultures? Like, is that allowed? No. For me, I believe in just yeah, yeah blending in very much so. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like I was, I I wasn't raised with culture. Like I was, my mom. We moved. It's such a nice story. Yeah, like we so we. Good. My mom doesn't never raise any of us with like culture. culture. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it was never an expectation like. You need to do this, or you need to do that, or you need to add this way, or you need to act that way, because like no, that's what culture is accepted. Like my mom really just like raised us to be us. Whether so I are. never yeah. had, so there was never any kind of level of expectation. So my mom is Indonesian, my dad's Surinamese, he's black Surinamese. Cool. I know originally we're not from Suriname. Like I know we were on a plantation. Like I literally know my history. Like my great grandma, I think it was, married the slave owner. Like that was that was like I know where like where my history cool, started. Yeah. So I know I'm not Surinamese originally, you yeah. know somewhere in Africa we have no clue where but then it's like my mom is also from Jordan so I've always had a part in every single culture my mom had braids growing up my mom's like yeah. very she looks white but she's Indonesian she had braids book, books braids she would wrap her hair like you know um, and it was very very normal for me it was yeah. never like yeah. a thing like oh yeah. culture appropriation you shouldn't do I only, you yeah shouldn't the first that. time I've ever heard about like um, cultural appropriation was when I was like 15, 16. Yeah, Kim like, Kardashian. Yeah. That was it. Kim yeah, or even like in How do you feel about that though? Because the issue with Kim Kardashian is that she is a rich white woman who's benefiting from things that are stereotypically like called ugly within black culture mm -hmm. and like seen as unprofessional and things like this. Yeah, when I saw Kim Kardashian, that's when I really realized I was like, not everyone does it in a respectful way. Yeah. And that's when I was like, this is a problem, you know, yeah. because it's not... I don't think it's okay. It's like sexualizing. I think it's called the Aodai, like the traditional like Vietnamese or uh, Chinese dresses, mm. and having them like you know cut out and your boobs out and your you know your legs showing. And I'm like, that's not respectful to that culture because it's meant to be worn a certain way out of respect. Yeah, for that culture, you shouldn't be turning it, like sexualizing it. Or for for Kim Kardashian to call uh what she had box braids or she had cornrows yeah, and she called them like I forgot what she called but she called it a completely different name. And that's when I was like, this is clearly a problem, and it's yeah. a bit like, you know. I can't just But be I like just feel like the everything. backlash is so severe. Yeah. And I, I don't like mistakes, that. Like I, the yeah. cancel culture that we're getting into, mm -hmm. I don't like that. I feel like mistakes I understand also the be intention, made. but I just feel like the backlash is yeah. so severe. And so is Kim Kardashian <laughs> never allowed to have black hairstyles? No, I think I don't black think what? hairstyles like braids. Oh, hairstyles. I think she should, but she should also know what it's called. First yeah. of all, you should yeah. know what it's called. Yeah. You should get them done like I think she had her her baby. She got learn how to do her baby's hair mm. by a black woman. Yeah. Great. Like you get you know. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Learn. Put some respect where respect's due. Yeah. And that's calm. Like I don't have a problem because my mom wears braids. I don't have a problem with that as long as but don't go claiming it like it's Bo Derek braids. That's what she called it. Bo Derek braids. <laughs> Because that was like a 70s film. Yeah. She oh. called them Bo Derek Braids when they were cornrows. Yeah, 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 And yeah. it's like, put some respect or respect yeah, to you. Yeah. That it wasn't Bo Derek Braids, no. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. cornrows, you know. And people have been doing them for yeah. hundreds, thousands of who knows how many years, yeah. you know. So I feel like everyone should be able to explore whatever culture just because the world is so open. But in a respectful way. Yeah. So in, in terms of that Vietnamese dress you were talking mm. about, like, I'm not too sure in that specific, but in, like, do you know those, like, Chinese traditional mm -hmm. dresses, mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. ones that are like the short with yeah, like the, and then you have yeah. the buttons up top. Yeah. If you're a designer who wants to take inspiration from that, but it's it's a traditional like garment, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you want to put your own artistic spin on it, should you now be limited to like what that culture sees respectful? Because you said they shouldn't be sexualizing the yeah. Vietnamese things; they should do it in like respect. But what one person sees as respect is what. Is not what the other person sees respect. You know what I mean? That's a great question. For me, it's like there is. Um, oh my god, I literally can't remember anyone's names. There is this. I think she is Chinese designer. Wo Pei, I think is her name. She takes. <laughs> she takes no. inspiration. Um, I'll find it later. But she takes inspiration from her culture, so Chinese inspiration, um, and she makes very modern dresses. Sometimes they're like high cut, see through, whatever. Yeah. But it's it's art and she does it as art she doesn't use it as like a cheap uh cheap like um sexualized thing like you know what i mean like when um people use it for like just sex like only fans pictures or whatever stuff like that and it's like the, mm. i feel like there's a, even like even making it not what it was and like making it sheer or making thing it can be done in a respectful way in mm, a non okay. like because it's it's art art is different to me 
to like pretty little thing turning it into something that it is. Yeah. yeah, like you know what I'm saying? And it's like that that to me is different. Or like using um a Native American costume for Halloween. Mm. Like that. It's that's sexualizing it. You can take inspiration from Native Americans and make it art or make it clothes in a respectful way. Like, you know, plenty of people use Aztec prints to mm. make really nice clothing. Plenty of people, you know, use uh dragons, Asian designs, inspiration from the different dynasties mm-hmm. to make respectful clothes and great designs and stuff like that. But there's a difference to me to when you turn it into like um a costume. You know, like a mm. sexy costume or a sexy this or mm. Halloween outfits, you know, that's a respectful way of doing things. And you can still look nice and look sexy in it, but it can still be a respectful tribute to it, you know? Okay. That's what I feel like. I feel like that's a very it's a fine line, but there's a line. Yeah. That's okay. what I feel. There is definitely a line. Okay. I like that answer. It's going to. Thank you. I was really trying to be like, you know, I was really yeah, trying to think about this. I was yeah. like, how can I say it? How can I go up on the ghost? Don't yeah. be counsel myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think everything like these days is you have to be really careful. I think you have to think about what you're gonna say, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's my personal opinion. Do you think that maybe people get offended too quickly? Oh they my do. god, definitely. They Holland, do. like I said, we're very blunt people. Yeah. I have said things before where I've been told I am so rude and I'm this and I'm that. To me, I'm not rude. To me, I'm just <laughs> honest. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone, someone like my mom, will she go up to me? This, this is how serious it is. My mom will go up to me and she'll look at me. She'll be like, I don't like your hair. <laughs> but it's not rude. She'll think my hair, okay? Or she'll yeah. be like, mm, she's just. What do you do with it? Just like, <laughs> or your, your wigs lifting. Thank you. Yeah. If someone says my wigs lifting, thank you. I need to know this stuff because yeah. otherwise, I'm walk around looking crazy. That's what yeah, I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want like I keep very honest people around me. I want you to tell me if I look like a fool. Tell me I look like a fool. Like my mom or some see me, she like you look like a clown. <laughs> You're wearing two different colors, and I'm like, mm, gonna go change. Because <laughs> sometimes you need that, and I feel like it's. Yeah. People are very sensitive because once you start being very sensitive, then you can't s- tell things honest- honestly. And then, you know, people have that thing like, oh, why didn't you tell me? Well, if I told you, you would take it. Yeah, you would take You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like I, I, I don't agree That's with you. That's so sensitive. my mom as well. I feel like yeah, my mom would have so much. Yeah, it's just be honest about it. Sometimes hard truths be hurting your feelings, though. Can't yeah, but then, it. like, it needs to. Sometimes it needs your feelings need to be hurt. Yeah. yeah. That's, like, that's the way you get stronger. I believe sometimes feelings need to be hurt. It's better to say it honestly than... Depends on, I. like, what exactly you're talking about, obviously. Because some things you can just, like... You can say it in a nice way, but you can still be honest. Mm. You know? Or, like, for me, like, I always tell my mom... Imagine, like, you complaining about someone else's appearance. Don't you feel like mm-hmm. some things are a bit intrusive? Like... Oh, no, but I wouldn't say they complain about it. But it's, like, if it's my friend, and mm-hmm. she asks me, oh, do I look good? And I don't think so, or I don't like her outfit... I'd be like, mm, I think it was something better in close up. Mm, you know, so like or, respectful or like, yeah, or like if her hair, she's got her hair going, I'm like, mm, some still say in a rude way, just out of fun. But like, they, they get me. But like sometimes you'd be like, um, I feel like, like, do you want to do something with your hair? Like, I can help out. Like, what, do you, what are you mm. thinking? What do you want to do with hair? What are you kind trying to achieve? It, yeah. You know? Mm. And that's like a nice way of saying, like, girl, no. 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 It's not just, working. Yeah. Not for me. And it's like, well, for me, like, people can just tell me, like, you look crazy. And I'd be like, mm, thank you. I need to, because I need to know that. Like, I really. I appreciate it. Someone telling me harsher than someone telling me. But first, do you agree? Like that person needs to ask you. You need to know who you're talking to. Do not be going to strangers telling people the harsh truth. Like I, (laughs) you need to like because all my friends know the way I am. I'm very blunt. I'm very honest. And I think people, you need to know who you're talking to because you might get punched in the face if you tell someone you know they look crazy. Yeah. And so I feel like you just need to know. Like I think friends should be very honest with each other. Family should be very honest with each other. But if it's like like me to you, I wouldn't be as blunt with you. I was like, I'm on to my sister to my mom, you know, because yeah, out of like, because you know, like we have no, we know each other, but I was, I want to be nice to you, you know, I want to stay friends, yeah. you know, <laughs> with my sister, I don't necessarily care. The people I've known for like years, I don't care anymore, you know, like it is what it is. I'm gonna tell you. So she's been holding back, telling you. Some I hot feel like, truths. yeah, I feel like, I feel like it. <laughs> she has a list it's on her phone. Truth. It's definitely no half truth. I just, I just, I be telling you, I think it's important. Things I want to say to Joanna, <laughs> Joanna, but I'm just waiting until we're good enough friends so I can so just I can roast <laughs> this woman. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think it's important. I think it's good. To, I think it's good for everyone to get their feelings hurt a little bit sometimes. I think that's important. Has there been any harsh shoots that have particularly hurt your feelings from anyone? Yeah, <laughs> my sister. She told me one time I was like six or something. She was like, mm, "Your hair looks so ugly," <laughs> and I was six, and yeah. I had my natural hair out an afro. Yeah. I was from when I cried. I was like, "I want different hair. I want <laughs> I want straight hair." This that, and the other. 
And then my mom put my hair in some twist. And then I went to my sister and I was like, I look yeah. so much better than you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but yeah, my mom, yeah, my mom really like put in effort. She always, she, she used to always tell me, don't, um, don't care about what anybody thinks of you, but don't give them anything. Don't care what anybody says about you, but don't give them anything to say. Mm. So always go out looking put together. You don't need to look, go looking great, makeup on anything. But don't be looking like, you know, even crackhead. if you're going for a coffee, right? Yeah, like, don't look like That's a crackhead. What my mom but, like, says. Yeah, yeah, but like look you know, put some put put matching socks on. You know, like put yeah. put your hair in a bun, you know, at least or something yeah. like that. And so it's like stuff like that. So I've always kinda like known that and tried to not have any like you know, give anyone to say anything about me. But when I was young I really didn't care and when my sister would say small things like that, it would really hurt my feelings. But now I really appreciate it. I want her to tell me. How are you, Joe? I don't know, actually. I can't remember anything. Like, because I don't spend too much time with my mom and my sister. Mm. And they're like the only, like, honest people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't get, I feel like the, because I don't spend too much time with my mom, every time I'm with her, she tries to be so nice to yeah, me. Yeah, like, I get like, you. She's my little princess. Me yeah, you're my little princess. I'm not going to yeah. say anything. I would love that, personally. <laughs> <laughs> what, is your, what is your relationship like? Is your mom very honest with you? Um, see, African women are very stubborn and they get their way. And like, it's not like I can argue with my mom ever, to be honest with you. No matter what, what I say, I'll actually never be right on my mom. Um, this one time I had, I had, I used to have dreads like up to my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Like it was long dreads. Cause I really wanted to look like Bob Marley or oh, there was just, there was a rubber wrestler called Kofi Kingston as well. And he just looked cool. Mm-hmm. And I was wanting to tie the hair back. And she, one day I came home from school and she was like, yeah, you look homeless with that hair. And then she... That's what they say to me? Yeah. Literally <laughs> yeah. made me go to a barber and shave off, like, no way. like maybe, like, six, seven years of, like, hair growth. Are you growth. serious? And, like, the barber was dead, and he l- ruined my hairline. Like, he, he messed me up. Like, my hairline was way back. And I had to go into school. I had, like... I used to play basketball for, like, New Newcastle and stuff like that. So, like, our games were, like, recorded and there was pictures being taken. I remember this one picture of just me with my hairline just on the other court. And I was like, why? Oh, my God. I was like, why did you do this to me? I was like, oh was this year. And then I went into school and then my teachers, this in primary school, my t- teachers were like, oh, like, what happened to your hair? And then I was like, my mum f- forced me to remove it. And there was this whole, like, childlike safety thing because they were like, Oh, like what did she like hold you down or something like force you and I was like I was upset about it but I didn't say like she, 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 she like, held me down or anything but they were like genuinely worried about me because I was like oh, I was forced to shave my hand they were so shocked at the idea that like my parents could force, force me to yeah. do that yeah. that's so that's natural the thing. I'm that's, not gonna so that's the thing about culture that I was like saying with my mom like my mom would never tell me to change anything about my like about my hair or necessarily mm-hmm. unless it's like not done but do you feel like that's like as a result of culture that you would like, just listen to your mom when she does that Oh, for sure. You definitely cannot, in my culture, you cannot argue with your mum. Like, I've never really? raised my voice at my mum. Like, never. It would never, it would never, never happen. I've never raised my voice at my mum, but me and my mum definitely had arguments. And the thing is, like, me and my mum, I sat therapy when I was 13, and mm. we've had, like, me and my mum are very progressive. We have very honest with each other and very progressive conversations. So if, yeah, she yeah. Do, if she does something I don't like, I'll just be like, I don't like what you just did. I need some time away from you. And I'll just tell her, and she'll be like, I understand that. And then we'll later come back and we'll have, like, yeah. A really like you know mature conversation. Yeah, if like, I told that to my mom, that's it. I'm really? dead. <coughs> I'm dead. Yeah. Even now, like when you're adults, like has that changed? No. No, no it's less. Recently, recently, something like that did like test out our relationship, and I tried to do that, mm-hmm. and it was just a case that like you can't get that point point across. Like I would love to have those progressive conversations, but like I'm I hundred percent think my mum does not listen to a word I say. Like she won't listen to a word I say. It's it's just all it is. I think in her head I'm her child, so it's like I won't know any better. Like like I have a distinct memory of like in like A level like science and stuff, my mum was like trying to give me like science advice. Bear in mind she didn't do science and I was like, Oh, that's not right and she was just like, Yes, yes it, it is. is. This is what I learned <laughs> And I was like what do you want me to tell you here? And then she made me write down this wrong answer. Mm. And I was just like, what? Yeah, <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was just like, what? So would you want to raise your kids in that same way? Or like, would you do that differently? Like, cause, cause like you said, like this kind of comes from culture. Would you want to maintain that? No. Do you feel like you have bits of your mom in you? Um, yeah, for, for sure. Like, Bear in mind, my mum is a great person. She's of a course. very yeah, like, yeah, of course. Of course. She's a very caring person, mm. and more time she is doing what's best for me, mm. even if I don't know it at the time, which which is fine. Um, 
But I'm kind of like in the believer where like parents aren't really the boss. Like we don't, they're just people. Like mm. my mom had me when she was 22 and I'm 22 now. So it's not like I could raise a child now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just about life experience. And sometimes your kids can teach you things because they mm-hmm. experience life differently. And you've yeah. just got to be able to like have that conversation with you. I think instead of telling my kids off, you just kind of got to make them understand why the things they're doing is wrong yeah. and like try yeah. and lead them down the right path. But it's not a case of like, don't do that because yeah. I tell you not to. It's, don't yeah. listen to me because I'm the adult, you're the child. Like you need to actually give me a reason why what I'm doing is wrong and teach me instead of mm. punishing me. Yeah, my mom did like a mix of that. Like she was very much the authoritarian. I always mm-hmm. say like she was a dictator, but like she <coughs> always told me, you always ask why. You, you yeah. never take anything I say as facts. You always ask me why. And so sometimes she'd get mad at me. Or even when I got, like, if I was going to get my butt beat, yeah. she would be like, do you understand why I'm beating you? And if I'd be like, no. She's, and she would literally sit down and explain to me why she's about to beat me. And she'd be like, <laughs> you did this. I specifically told you not to do this. I told you if you do this, yeah. you're going to get your butt beat. Yeah. And so now I'm beating your butt. And yeah, then she'd yeah, yeah. she be like, okay, get up. And then I'll get my butt beat. And yeah. she was always, but it was... Even though it was like, I can always ask why, she would get mad at me for asking why. <laughs> it was like, don't question me when I tell you why. When it's why, <laughs> it's the thing. You're, 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 there's no like compromising yeah. after I'm going to get my butt beat, yeah. you know? I'm not against authoritarianism when you're raising your kids. Mm. Like, I do think you also need like, like it's a carrot and the stick. The stick is actually very important because a lot of kids be answering back to their parents mm-hmm. and be so much like actual disrespect. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like you should be able to ask questions but you shouldn't be able to disrespect your parents. Bad. Like, if you feel like you're on the same level where you're like, oh, mum, fuck off. Like, why, why are you that's throwing that out there? Yeah. Like, that's wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I would never do that. But at the same time, it's what your mum was doing was perfect. Like, mm-hmm. explain to you why, what's going on. And that's exactly what I'm going to do to my kids, I think. Yeah. That's so interesting. With my mum, I'm like, I f- I'm very lucky with my mum because she's just, like, naturally... You know the idea of motherhood that mm-hmm. everyone has, like, very, like nurture and yeah. she just knows you like i may be sick and i don't tell anyone she's like you're sick what happened like tell me what's going on she's just i'm here in england and she still feels in her like when something's wrong she called me oh, in the middle yeah. of like what's happening to you <laughs> like, like, that's you. Like, <laughs> I'm like, like dream. mom what the hell you want about it like i know there's something wrong please tell me so my mom is very open-hearted but the thing is most of the times that i argue about my mom is because of the family like, yeah things is going on mm. so she always takes the anger on me. Right. That's in, We're not yeah. actually arguing because I did something wrong. Because mm-hmm. me and my mom, like, it's beautiful, the relationship we've, we've managed to build. Like, mm-hmm. it's so, like, deep and mature. And we just get to know one another, yeah. you know what I mean? But most of the time we talk, we argue is mostly because of what my other part of my family did to her or how she feels and why I don't have her back. And I'm like, mom, I just want to get, I just don't want to get into that. Like, don't put me that. But she put, she pushed me because kind of, she needs someone to rely on. Yeah, so. I get that. Yeah. So we never actually had like arguments where like to the point where like, okay, I'm going to smack you because you did something wrong or, you know, you, you never got beat. Yeah, that's I never, interesting. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Never, never, never. You never got beat. That is never, so interesting. Never got that's grounded. Wild. Never. Never wow. got grounded? Never got grounded. In that's my life. You were a real good child. I was. I'm not going to lie. I was. I was. Is that I why was. you never got grounded? Because you're a good child? Or does your mum just not believe in that? No, no, no. Because I'm just a good child. Uh, yeah. Because you're my sister. sister though, right? Yeah, I have two sisters. Have either of them maybe been hit before? Yeah, my yeah. younger sister. Uh, okay, okay. So you, you are my sister. Like you are my sister. My sister got beat. I got my butt beat all yeah. the time. Twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, my younger sister. She got so bad. My mum had this like drawer um, of belts and oh like she make you pick your own. Yeah, she would. But yeah. like, mine no way. Yeah, she too. only ever hit me like maybe like once or twice, really. Wow. But like that she is. would always like go she, over to to the the belts and just like look over and be like oh like which belt am I gonna choose which belt just to scare you exactly That's yeah. oh. actually yeah, I have this one story so <laughs> um, I used to just be like staying up late just like on like my little like iPad or whatever just mm. doing like whatever I was doing and this one time my mum caught me and she took the uh, the iPad, iPad off me at night da, da, da. I wake mm. up. And like, I'm in primary school, uh-huh. maybe like, yeah, like three or something. Mm-hmm. And like, I walk downstairs and like my school clothes and she's like on the phone to her friends talking like, oh, like, oh, I'm just sick of him now. Like, I think I'm going to book a flight and send him back to Zimbabwe and da, da, da. And she's going through this entire like 
now I know this is obviously an act because like because mm. it was too well timed yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah. But she was like, yeah, like I'm gonna have to book the flight as soon as he gets get home. I'm gonna have to tell him da da da. But she was like saying this loud enough for me to hear. And then I'm at school and I'm just contemplating all day. I'm like, damn guys, this could be like the last, the last time day. I see you. Like I'm like uh-huh. hugging all my friends. Like bro, this could be it da da da. And then I get get home and it's just like she's just like, oh like you need to sort it out, da-da-da, because I was about to send you back and, like, and your grandma would have loved to see you out there, but you wouldn't have came back, da da And I was <laughs> like, oh, man. But now I realise it was a threat. Yeah. But yeah. at the time I was like, that's so deep. You're threatening yeah, to send me back yeah. to Africa. And loads of my friends actually got sent back to Africa. Yeah, one of my well. friends got sent back. I never saw him since. It's no. wild. Still there, I swear. It's wild. Because he's, he's a bad kid. Yeah. And then one day he was just gone. And then we found out through his cousin. Yeah. But he was gone. Yeah, it's insane. Really I've always been against that, like no, I that think sometimes it's type like of severe punishment. I remember, like when I used to go uh, back to Angola for mm. like during summer holidays. Obviously, there would be like some parents just smacking their kids, mm. and I would go to my dad's like, please do something, or either I would like go and like be in between of the parent, like really? just protecting the child. I'm That's very wild. Yeah, no, I've always I think been. I needed the beans I got. I got beat with like different things. I got beat with a wooden spoon, like you know the cooking spoons. The, the <laughs> spoon was a good one. I got beat with beat with a slipper, with the belt. No. I had to choose my own belt. I needed it though. Like there was times like I'm a, I talk a lot yeah. and I love to talk back. Yeah. I definitely did, especially mm. as a child. That's the I, thing I, about I me. Mouth, yeah. I listen. I just listen. Yeah, I no. get so terrified because of all the experience that I've witnessed, like other kids getting smacked. And I was like. No, I cannot let this happen. So I would just no, listen. For me, it was like my mom stopped beating me. Like she made a very clear point. After the age of think twelve, she doesn't beat any of the kids. Mm-hmm. But it's like those starting years. It's like you are gonna learn right from wrong. So when you're yeah. thirteen, you can go live your life. Like after thirteen, like my mom was such a like, just tell me where to go and don't ask me questions. Like don't yeah. you don't have to ask me permission. Go do what you do. I trust you now. So those years were very much like I'm giving you all responsibility now. Like we started taking the bus and metro on our own. When I was six, my sister was seven. Yeah. That's when we started, like, so we did a lot of things on our own. So we got given <laughs> a lot of freedom. Yeah. And me, with freedom, I want to go do random things, you know? Like, you yeah. know, you're a kid. None of my friends were allowed to, but I would go get on the bus. And I would just stay on the bus and see where the bus goes, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, like, I would forget to tell my mom. So I would be gone for, like, two hours, phone would die. I wouldn't care because I know how I'm getting home, obviously, because yeah. I've been taking the bus for years now. But my mom, obviously, she's not, she's not here from me. I'm then come home from school, and then I'll get home. And she's like, I've told you, if you're going to do that, you have to message me, blah, blah, And then I get beat. But I know I, I know I need to do better. But mm-hmm. you best believe, next time I did that, my phone was charged, <coughs> you yeah. know? And then I kept in contact with her. And I feel like it was really important for me to just have that moment so I have, first of all, more respect for my mom because I had very much, like, a bad habit of seeing my mom as a friend. Because mm. my mom is very open. So we, you get to comfort. Me and my mom talked about everything. Like, be we talked about sex, we talked about boys, we talked about this, like, we talked about, nothing is hidden from my mom, like, she literally knows Same everything. Same with my mom, yeah. She goes to my Open phone, like, book. you know what I'm saying, anything, anyone messages me, like, my mom knows, like, I'll just tell yeah. her, like, oh, look at this, look at, like, you know, we're very, very open. Yeah. But then, with the same, like, to be able to do that, I very much was like, oh, like, best friends, you know, like, oh, my mom's my friend, yeah. I can tell her whatever. And then sometimes I'll slip up and I'll forget, my mom's not my friend, so I can't yeah. be talking to her any kind of way. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's when we kind of, like, have that problem. But then when I was 13, my mom, like, allowed to switch the roles of friends. So then we really changed from her being that, like, parent to us being friends. And so having that change when I was 13 was really important because then, you know, that's when you kind of, you know, start going through the problems and you get, like, you know, their dating starts around the school and then, you know, the mean girls and everything. So having my mom then as a friend, I knew how to respect her as a mom whilst being able to talk to her, like, yeah. buddies and just, you know, I take everyone. I went clubbing with my mom. First time I drank <sighs> ever was with my mom. That's like, nice. she was, and because I was ab- able to drink my mom, I hated drinking. I don't drink now. Because yeah. I was able to everything. I did when that I, with my dad. When I wanted yeah. to smoke weed for the first time, my mom was like, to call my brother. She was like, take your <laughs> take your little sister. She wants to smoke, she wants to smoke weed. And then I saw my brother, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I was like, you made this dead. I was like, you made it boring. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, it's still cool. And, it's yeah, and, I'm, and I, don't, I don't do it. And because my mom was very accepting about, like, she, we always spoke about drugs and alcohol and everything. Like, everything in the world. Yeah. I have never actually wanted to do those things. So I've never, like, I don't drink alcohol. I don't do anything like that. So I feel like the beatings were important for me to get that respect yeah. for her, you know, to understand yeah. she's always my mother. Yeah. And she's not my friend, you know. We yeah. need to be able to have a balance. Yeah. For drugs, my mom... Um, old job. She used to be like a criminal psychologist, mm. so she would like oh, work in. So she'd work mm-hmm. in the cells, and she'd be like the person to like decide if someone's criminally insane or not, or if they just like do do whatever they do. 
So like her son's on drugs it, um, and her dad also was like kind of like alcoholic and he died from from that mm-hmm. as well. So her son's on drugs and things like that it was always just like a hard no, um, this is dangerous, these are X, Y's. Because obviously like when you're in the cells, you see like the worst of worst. Mm-hmm. So she'll see these like weed addicts, I guess, but it'll be like people that do spice and things like that mm-hmm. and they'll have psychosis and things like that. So she'll always have this like super bad view of it. And because it's like years of affirmation of that, you just can't talk to her about that. Right. Even even if you like, like I have tried to have conversations about this and be like, oh, mum, like, what about all this? Like, what about all these suicide rates going down in Amsterdam? Like all this, and she's like, no. Amsterdam. This is something like very, very deep positive. Yeah. She's like, no, 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 no. It's, don't, don't ever do that. Or else I'll d- d- disown you. I was like, all right, I will never do it. That's really interesting. I think because like <laughs> <laughs> Poland is very like drug positive. It's a very drug positive yeah. country. Weed is legal. You know, yeah. my brothers were always smoking weed. Getting stoned on a carpet. That's yeah. True. You can't like you can't <laughs> you can't ever be like oh you can't do drugs. Like it's everywhere. I can go to the coffee shop and I can yeah, get, get it a right brownie, now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like there was there was, there was literally no point for her to ever be thinking about it. Yeah. And she just trusted us. And she, but she made sure like she was like anything you're gonna do for the first time. You do with your brothers, your sister, or with yeah. me. So you don't do anything alone. So I think first time I went out was with my mom. I went out coming with my mom the first time. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. First time I've done anything was always like with my mom, just because she's she's calm about it, but she's like, just don't be stupid. Because obviously my brother was the person in the cell, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like, there is there needs to be a very healthy balance between taking, you know, weed for fun and for this yeah. and like it turning you into a criminal. A zombie. You criminal. know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's like because we kind of experienced, I experienced a negative side, but then my mum was also very like chill about it and whole initial overall very mm. positive and accepting. Yeah. I never really thought they need to do it because yeah. it was always there. If yeah. something's always available, then it's yeah. only fun yeah, if it's, it's like breaking like, the rules. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, everything was boring. Yeah. You know, if I wanted to go out late at night, my mum would be like, cool, just text me. So yeah. I never wanted to go out. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I started living alone at 16. So I was already like, Everything was just yeah. boring at that point. I was yeah. already, I'd already done everything with my mom, so what's the point? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the thing. Like my parents, they've always been very, like, open-minded when it comes yeah. to me like, trying things. Obviously, mm. they they wouldn't like for me to continue yeah. keep doing <laughs> it. But, but if you want to try, it, yeah, cool, try. It. You have uh-huh. to, you know, you young try. It, but they've always been very no when it comes to clubbing and going out. They were really? like, you can do it, but do it at home. Or do it at your friend's house. That is so interesting. Don't go out clubbing. They My don't like me going out clubbing. Really? So, yeah, so growing up, I've always had to do, like, hidden. Like right. going Did out. they give you a reason for that? Like, yeah. What was the reason? I think it was. it's attached to the fact that my brother died like in a car accident and then right. he, yeah he used to do a lot of mm. clubbing going mm. out smoking and all that so doing right. all these things but outside of house mm. so they were very restrictive like to me and that's also why i've always been like good girls in intense in the sense of because i had that bad example mm. uh, whatever because of my brother uh i've always tried to not give them the reasons to like have like another like heartbreak yeah, yeah so yeah. that is so interesting it's funny yeah I've always she's trying to protect them a little bit do you think me yeah yeah definitely do you feel I'll that kind of limits you uh no because i feel like it's not part of my my way of being but is it by choice or because you felt like you had to at the beginning it's, it was because i feel like i had mm-hmm. to but now it's just like so me that i don't feel the need to go out anymore right would you want to try it going out yeah i can do it if i want but i just don't feel the need right okay. i feel yeah. like i always ask joanna this but are you an adventurous person <laughs> Ask we have so deep, we wait. We have different opinions when it comes to being adventurous. Right. So for me, being adventurous is actually like going skydiving or you know going kayaking or you know what I mean, like being doing things like with the nature, not really going mm-hmm. out for a zoot walk. A zoot walk is adventure because it's just you're it's going just out you there, smoking a zoot and talking. You, you don't know where you're going to go. You're just on a little adventure and you don't know what kind of food you're going to get. You want to walk down back streets. You want to go try a new little, little food spot. And because of that, you are exploring. Mm. Is, you is are. Just, it's it. different. You see, for me, I do what he does about sober. Like, I do. Yeah. Like, I... I don't mind going out for a walk, like, No, a, it's, like, night, it's not just a walk. Like, you do the most random. Like, I'd be, I'd be exploring biker at night. That's wild. No, like, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's 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 no, like, so much fun. Yeah. Or like you walk along the quayside, and then like I found the most amazing places to take pictures just from doing that. Yeah, and just it's just fun. But I think both of them are adventurous in their own, own way. way. Yeah, but one of them I feel like it's it's 
that's very don't come drastic. at me no no I'm very, that's <laughs> yeah, a very but, drastic version that's a way of being adventurous like that's that's little activities and then yeah. that's more like personality you, i feel like yeah. have you gone skydiving I'm going this summer, actually. That's cool. Yeah, I'm but I've been wanting summer. to. Yeah, I'm going this summer. Or Where are you going to skydive? In Portugal. That's mm. like, back, like my town. Yeah. Yeah, so it's nice. Like, for example, going to Uganda or like. That's when I'm Yeah, for sure. When I'm going, normally when I go back home for summer, like I go on like, there's like a um, river thing. Like I don't know what's the actual name in English, but like a river thing. And me and my friends, we go like. We go search for like crabs and then we catch the crabs and we, you know, just oh, little that's things. That's sure. that's nice, yeah. Little things that I'm used to do that. I feel this is my adventure side, mm-hmm. it's just doing these silly things and, you know, going out like you go to savannah. Savannah? Um, safaris? No, not safaris. It's like jungle type. Oh, whatever. Right, yeah. We go, I go out with my friends. We have like katanas and all that. And, you know, you see a snake and they just chop the, the head off of the snake. But that's you kill snakes? I don't do that. I, was saying, I, I am afraid snakes. of that, but no. this is my type of thing. Too. And then you see like, you know, the tribe people, like like indigenous Tribal people. people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go and you see the way they like, they act and all, and you interact, like you just blend in into the culture. This is my type of adventure. Mm. You know if you I mean? want to see some katanas, you can go biker as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can give a shit like with, with no, the, yeah. <laughs> So this is my type of adventure. So That's like going on um, road trips with my dad, and we'll oh, see like some trips. bangers. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever seen the rain? And I don't know if you guys know that song. I don't know who's it by. Credence, um, Credence Revival, something like that. No, oh, I, I need know. to show you that album. That's my type of vibe. You know, okay. cowboy vibe, Indiana Jones. Oh, my okay. dad is known as Indiana Jones in family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my dad. So my, I'm very much like my dad. It's me and my dad with the same people, like literally just the same. That's so sweet. Same person. So that's my vibe. That's still adventurous. That's cool. that's that's adventurous. It is adventurous. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> she's trying to convince me she's cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she's cool. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. God. So we've done one hour. Oh my Officially, God. Yeah. We made it. Cool. We still have like a couple questions. We just dive yeah. into other things. And Do you want to pause it and then start again and then we can cut it in? No, 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 we can continue. Okay. Yeah, we can continue. Um, yeah, so, like, do you have, like, any advices for um, black students, like, how they can navigate through university life if they don't feel blend in, like, they don't feel like they can, like, yeah. they're not managing to... maybe to not specifically in uni, but maybe in fashion, because getting into yeah. fashion, fashion as well is quite hard. Yeah. Um, well, let me just say, I'm nowhere in f- f- fashion right now. I'm just at the very, like, starting point. So if anyone's got any advice yes, for me... Yes, he's being humble. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's got any advice for me, let me know. Um, I'd say advice for black people in fashion or just life in general. I don't know. Both. Maybe just be open and don't try, like, try and just understand people's point of views. Like, I'm going to take it away from black people and just be, just in general. Mm-hmm. Just try and understand people's point of views and understand that sometimes people might not be coming from like a particularly negative place. Yeah. And if you put that negative like emphasis on that, all you're doing is bringing negativity into your own life, and then that's going to affect any decision you make because you think the world's against you or whatever. Like maybe the world is against you, but let's just pretend it's not and just mm-hmm. live life like how you trying to live life. Be confident in any decision you make, um, especially creatively. If you really believe in something, make sure you really believe in that and just make sure you just express it however you want to express it, especially when it comes to creativity. Because even if it's something wacky, someone's going to like it. And as long as you like yeah, it, yeah. that's someone. That's, cool. yeah. that's someone. Yeah. And you can only, especially for fashion as well, like you need to make mistakes in order to find mm-hmm. out what you really want. Like like yeah. you were saying about walking around, like your mum mum was like, you like a clown. If you didn't put that clown fit on, you'd never know. You know true, what I mean? True. Now I don't want yeah. to dress like a clown. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, true. The mistakes are important and just yeah. take risks. Yeah, and accept criticism. Facts. I think that's important in, in fashion. You need to be able to just, you know, take on the chin. Yeah. Facts. In modeling, I've been told some mean stuff, but it's it's all true. Most of it was true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's really important as well. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Is that your end goal? Like becoming. 
creative um i just want to do something is. that i'm proud of it doesn't have to be fashion i would i, I would like my own brand it doesn't n- have to make money really but mm-hmm. just yeah. the only reason i want my brand to be there is so that all my homies are stepping as hard as i am really <laughs> 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 realistically realistically and then like I've, al- I've always had this thing like I don't really want to be famous but respected in your field is oh just oh my god yes we both want yes. that too yes. I don't want to be famous but yeah we just want that because like Cause you, you don't want randomers yeah. in the street like oh my god are you Becca I'd be like oh. yeah I hate that but like you'd be like oh are you bored as fuck is that, is that you and I'm like oh shit that's me because <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. then you know you've got that common like yeah. that's that's your people you know what yeah. I mean like, I think once you get to the point of fame it's just a bit Overwhelming. Yeah, that's guys. For sure. I've got too many bones in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> my family's too dramatic for this. <laughs> Yo, cancel culture. They will catch you. They'll find Listen, some like yeah. tweets you posted. No, back they won't find from me. They find from my brothers and my mum. Exactly. I know they're coming for them, and I'll be like, oh. Well, exactly. I, mean, I enjoyed the five minutes. I enjoyed <laughs> the five minutes I had. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I think that that was all the questions. Yeah. Was anything that? Do, do you guys have any advice for 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 black people? Um, Just for people in general. me, uh, especially for mixed kids, maybe like mixed girls, mixed kids, you don't need to belong anywhere. Like, you know, you might not feel black enough on one side and white enough on the other side, but that's okay. Just be you. Although I very much respect culture, culture is not the end all and be all. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. Like, if you don't want to do what your mom tells you to do, don't do it. Like, life, life or life, regardless, yeah. you know? Stuff happens, you know, you make decisions, you're going to argue with your parents. It is what it is, as long as you're happy. Yeah, mine goes along the same lines. Just accept yourself. Yeah, sure. literally, that's the yeah, most important the thing. Yeah. That's Bec- it. Last thing, becoming like, becoming the idealized version that your parents want you to be in terms of like success. Like success is very individual. Yeah. And like, yeah. as I was saying there about like, I could not be making money off my clothing brand, but it would still be successful to me if people mm-hmm. I fuck with be wearing it. Yeah. Like you got to find your own personal definition of but, success and live yeah. to that. Like you don't necessarily have to be a doctor. You mm-hmm. don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be all these things. Find what you really want to do and yeah. just put your all into it. And if you can be proud of what you've done, then you're mm-hmm. successful. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. And don't be afraid to be independent. Facts. Yeah. That's really important. And, yeah. go- and whatever you want to do, just yeah. it's good to be independent. I think that was good. Well, that was. Episode. I was gonna ask you a question. I'm sorry, sorry, girl. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> My bad. What do you mean by that? Um. Well, I feel like, especially these days, but obviously I haven't lived in any other generation. But especially these days, people very much depend on what the world is telling them, what people around them are telling them, what mm-hmm. Instagram or social media, what whatever. It's them, and I feel like people are very afraid to be independent. Unique, yeah, mm. oh, yeah okay. but not, like it's not just unique, but also like um, moving out. I feel like there are mm. so many people that want to move out, and they're scared, you know. And I did it very young, and it was scary at times. But you know, stuff works out, and I feel like that fear is holds so many people back. Like I can see so many people, even that I know personally, that like are on the cusp of great things, but mm. fear is holding them back. And just being that only person to do that, and being you know that standout or that loner it's so scary to them but it's like stuff stuff will work out for you and don't be afraid of being independent whether mm. that is even being alone and not being in a relationship you know like it really applies to like everything like don't be don't be afraid to just be alone don't be afraid to be independent don't be afraid to be by yourself because that's like you're the only you're gonna die with yourself you were born alone you're gonna yeah. die alone mm. you know it's best to be happiest alone and whatever comes comes whatever goes goes see that's Oops. the thing where like me being alone no that's one thing I'm against. But it's that's literally... What do you mean by that? Yeah. I just don't like being alone. Why? Don't. I just don't. I can't. I can't. I can't. My life doesn't make any sense if I'm not sharing it with someone. If I'm mm. not connecting with something. I, sh- I just can't be that independent. That's why I ask you that question. Yeah, but to give... I feel like to give to others, you have to be full yourself. Exactly. Because yeah. But you can learn to be yourself. No, while like you're sur- I mean, like, oh. you need to be, like, happy alone and and, like... Because I feel like if you if you are let's say you 75%. can learn on how to be alone, but you don't have to be alone in Look, order to. I think like do you, do you know those people that are now have had like a high school sweetheart and like they've been together for like a while too. So <laughs> like I'm yeah. I'm the strong believer if you don't you don't know who you are you're without without that person like you've grown so much with that person and you rely on them for a certain portion of your mm-hmm. personality that without that person like who are you. 
like if you stepped away from that person do you know who you are i think that's, that's but but when you're in a relationship you have to make sure you have a boundary for that where you have time for yourself yeah. but you can still have a relationship mm-hmm. have your high school sweet, sweetheart but and still be full of yourself i think what's called like people need to make that time specifically mm-hmm. like i feel like uh, what it's i've seen with women isn't it yeah what i've seen with women there. specifically is they tend to lose their hobbies, their passions, mm. their, self identity, their goal, yeah. their you know ambition when they find a man. Mm. Because like they automatically take a step back and it's like it's you know mom's always said like there's a, a strong uh woman there's a what's that next to a, a yeah, strong there's man. Yeah, behind every strong man whatever. There's a, a smart woman yeah, or whatever yeah. behind a strong man. But I feel like you, even though you can be standing behind your man, you also need to be your own woman, you mm. know? And I feel like that's very important. I feel like that's what people miss out on and it's not necessarily bad to be high school sweethearts but like you said like you need to have an identity mm-hmm. you can't be like like i always say when i think of you i shouldn't think of anyone else mm. you know i should just be able to think of you yourself i shouldn't be thinking oh yeah so and so boyfriend of or girlfriend of so and so oh yeah, yeah. 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 that's bad. I should never, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's no, horrible no, no, that, but i think it's that. good i think everyone needs to have time alone i think like specifically like literally figuratively everything that like, well. alone just because you need to be comfortable with yourself because yeah. Who knows, like, not in, like, a very depressive way. It's kind of not very depressing. But if everyone around you dies, you need to be able to be happy. True. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, if if you decide, oh, you need to move, you're going to move to, um, let's say, France. There's no one living in France. True. You need to be able to be happy. And then you can be happy yourself and still want to go meet other people. You know? It's just being happy. I think that's important. But I feel like if you move to France and you don't manage to actually integrate yourself with the French community... Then you're doing something wrong. That's, that's what I mean. Like, you can be alone, but only for a certain period of time. You cannot be alone forever. No, no I don't mean, like, in that sense, I don't mean alone, like, literally always. But you just I mean, mean, like, discovering yourself and... Yeah, no, but I feel like everyone needs to have a, a portion of time. Like, independence. Yeah, so everyone needs to have a portion of time that they are literally alone. And then it's like, as, so, as long as you're comfortable being in that situation, mm. oh, okay. after that, like, you know, you don't have to be alone. Obviously, like, physically, you can be with a partner, you can be with... Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I feel like you need to always be comfortable with yourself because I feel like people tend to have lose your own minds yeah yeah. I think the okay. issue is relying on someone else for your happiness yeah dependence like yeah. you can't like you have to know how to be mm-hmm. happy by yourself and if yeah. you can't do that then how are you going to be happy with someone else literally but it's not even just people Instagram social media phones you know everything like you need to be able to be happy with all, all oh, of that stuff I was going to say don't be afraid to just have a regular life. Like social media yeah, puts it across huge. like, yeah, yeah. You I've got to be traveling every two months. Yeah, I've got to be an yeah. Instagram model. Dubai, I've got to be yeah, keep definitely. up appearances. It's not real. It's Fact. it's imaginary. Yeah. Your your MCM on Insta is actually broke. Like he's actually broke. Like it's fine. Period. It's it's, it's all good. Like <laughs> yeah. you don't need to live up to any standards. Just live yeah, up to what you want for yourself. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Create your own version of success. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Happiness comes in many different forms. Facts. That's the end. Yeah, I guess. and that was episode three, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. We talked about a lot. We covered a lot of yeah. fashion, a lot of life in Newcastle, and yeah. um, hopefully, Becca will return at some point to give us updates on the fashion yeah. brand. You exactly. know how things are going. Should, should, should we get yeah. any no? recommendations from Becca? Yeah, you got any yeah. any book recommendation, any podcast, book, podcast. any YouTube videos? Oh, I movie. I have a YouTube recommendation which actually taught me so much. Mm. Um, there's this YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly, and I love that. Yeah, you know what wow, I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So, like, the concept of the channel is this, is this photographer who like goes around like Skid Row, which is like a really mm-hmm. popular place for like prostitutes, pimps, a lot, a lot of oh, crime yes. and like yeah. homelessness and all these things, and he runs like a little like video like interview with these people, but. The way he'll set it out is he'll talk about like he'll ask them about their childhood. Mm-hmm. They'll go through like mm-hmm. why did the things that you ended up doing like what led to, led that? to that? And you see these themes, and it kind of like humanizes these people yeah. that might yeah. be on like the, on the fringes of society. Facts. And you realize that just because this person's a murderer it doesn't mm-hmm. mean they're like a bad person. Yeah. Certain things led up to that, and I likely would have made pretty similar choices to them. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm looking through it, like oh damn, like just because this person's labelled as this, they're not necessarily a bad person. And it just yeah. taught me yeah. some, some, some pretty interesting lessons. Yeah. You should watch that if you get yeah, a chance. Yeah, it's really good, but yeah. it's also really sad sometimes. Super like, sad. Yeah. Super that's sad, a really yeah. good recommendation. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Honestly. But yeah, so we'll see. We'll talk again next week? Next week? No, next. this week. Oh, right. This week. Tune in to Aluchi's episode next week. Yes, that's coming next week. <laughs> All right, that is it. Okay.